Hey everybody, so right now I want to do some myth busting. I really believe that there's a whole group of side-by-side -side people who think that Jeeps are just total money pits and are no fun at all. And then on the flip side, I think there's a big contingent of Jeepers who think that side-by-sides are just overhyped, underbuilt garbage. Now, is any of that true? Well, there might be some truth to some of it, but not all of it. So I want you to come for a ride with me as we really dissect this issue and talk about which one is more fun and which one is a better value, a Jeep or a side-by-side. -side. So let's go for a ride and try to figure this one out together. So first off, where does this whole argument sort of stem from? Well, you may have seen in the past here on TFL Off-Road, we made a video called Why Are Side-by-Sides So Expensive? It's obvious that the prices of these machines is climbing like crazy and that you guys are really concerned with how much these things cost. So that video did really well. But more importantly than that, it sparked a really interesting debate in the comments. I think the most popular comment on that video is, why would I spend 30 grand on a side-by-side -side when I can buy a Jeep? That, that was all over that video. And, and I think that's really where this comes from is this belief by people that you can just buy a Jeep and replace a side-by-side -side or vice versa, you know, buy a side-by-side -side and replace a Jeep. And these are really different vehicles. So that's kind of the, the genesis of this. And now I wanna dive into the argument, look at both sides and try to come up with a, a reasoned response to which one you should buy a Jeep or a side-by-side. One of the most important factors in this comparison, of course, is price. So let's talk about pricing. Now, overall, on a sort of general look, a side-by-side -side is gonna be cheaper than a Jeep. Now, if you're looking at brand new, uh, I did all my research just on the Polaris lineup to kind of keep it simple and because they're sort of the leader in off-road. But if you look at Polaris, you can get into a Razor 570 for you know just a little over 10,000 bucks. And that is a brand new side-by-side -side for just over 10 grand. That's not bad. Now, when you're talking about a Wrangler here, if you want an absolute base sport model, you're still looking at high 20s and then if you're talking about a Rubicon the most off-road ready model straight out of the factory you're talking about forty three thousand dollars in the United States now the model I'm in here this is a Sahara unlimited this is not the off-road model in fact this is basically the mall crawler special but even so this thing once you load it up with options like I have the two liter turbo with e-torque I have the soft retractable roof up here this Jeep here in Canada cost $67,000. Now in the United States for this exact package, you're probably three or four grand less, maybe a little bit more. But even still, the point is you can load these things up to crazy levels these days. Now when you're talking about the high end of side-by-sides, it's true. You can spend 30 grand. If you want something like the Turbo S XP4, that four-seater Turbo S, the pinnacle of Polaris's performance lineup, you're gonna spend $30,000. So the brand new pricing is pretty cut and dry. You're gonna be cheaper in a side-by-side. -side. But the more complicated end of the story, of course, is the used market. And why wouldn't you consider buying used, right? You're gonna get better value, especially in a Jeep that's been modified. Now, for anyone who's done modifications, you know you never get all your money back. You never get all your money back for the parts, and you never get all your money back for the labor. And if you do the labor yourself, well, you saved money, but you never get that time back. So buying a Jeep that's actually already modified for off-roading can sometimes end up being the best value rather than buying brand new. And you know what? R regardless of whether it's modified, just buying a, a used Jeep can really save you money. Here on TFL, we recently did our cheap Jeep series where we went out, we found an old TJ, we we bought it, we did the simplest modifications we could, which really was just a two inch lift and a set of tires. And we took that thing out to the trail and had an absolute blast with it. And the price tag on that cheap Jeep was $10,000 all in. Um, so you know what? That's a great example of how you can spend just a little bit of money on a Jeep too and be pretty well served by it. 
Then of course you also have the used side-by-side -side market where you can buy something for dirt cheap too. So just in terms of cost, brand new, side-by-side is going to be cheaper. Even used, you might save a few bucks on one of those machines. Now the next argument is all about what you're getting for that money, the actual value. And the very first very obvious argument is that I can drive my Jeep on the road, right? Like I'm doing right now. This Jeep is street legal. It has airbags. It has a number of different safety systems. Um, it, it's street legal. So, you know, I can drive it to the trail. I can off-road all day. And then I can drive it home. When you have a side-by-side, -side, that is not the case. Side-by-side, -side, you either need to live on the trail or you need to own a trailer and a tow vehicle to be able to get your machine to the trail. So that adds a whole level of complication. And you know what? That take some of the value out of the side-by-side -side and adds it to the Jeep. So even for one of those cheap Jeeps, if you're gonna buy that thing, it's gonna be street legal. And yes, for all of you yelling at your computer screen right now, I know that side-by-sides can be street legal in some places, and that's where these arguments get really complicated and really specific to your regionality and what your usage case is. Because if I can buy a side-by-side, -side, make it street legal, that I can just drive into town, pick up some groceries, go to the pharmacy and drive home in my Razor, well, all of a sudden, that's a huge added value onto that price tag. There was a little Jeep wave right there too. Um, off topic, but I gotta bring it up. That's the one thing a Jeep does for you. It brings you into this really incredible community. Jeep people, you know, Jeep people, I keep using that term like it's really a, a recognized thing because it kind of is. Everyone who owns a Jeep generally is really nice to other people who own Jeeps. The, the Jeep community is strong. So buying into one of these things, there's another added value point. You're getting into this strong community. Whereas in the side-by-side -side community, it's broad, right? You could own a Polaris or a Kawasaki or a Can-Am or a Yamaha. And and those, each one of the brands sort of has its own loyalists, right? So it's not exactly the same camaraderie as you're gonna get out of a Jeep. And you know what, I don't own this, I'm driving it for a week, but I gotta admit that I love participating in the Jeep wave. But even once it's street legal, remember the safety aspect. If you get a new Jeep, you're getting all kinds of safety features. If you can get an old Jeep, you're still gonna get airbags, which is better than nothing. Plus, you're just gonna get more metal around you, a stronger frame underneath you. So in a collision, there's no doubt you're gonna be safer in a Jeep than you're going to be in your side-by-side -side with just the roll cage. Next point we have to discuss is just off-road worthiness in general. And here's where some of the compromises that on-road sort of bring along, sort of present themselves. So in a Jeep Rubicon, for example, you're getting really good ground clearance. You're getting really good approach and departure angles when compared to other on-road vehicles. Uh, the Rubicon is probably the most off-road worthy vehicle you could buy straight out of the factory. Some Ford Raptor people might disagree with that, but I, I think that's true, the Wrangler Rubicon. Um, but when you compare it to a side-by-side, -side, no, you're not getting the same amount of ground clearance. No, you're not getting as good of a approach angle. In fact, the, the Turbo S, the wheels are the very first thing to meet an obstacle. They're actually a little bit in front of the front of that vehicle, which means essentially that your approach angle is 90 degrees. It's straight up because, you know, if you do approach a vertical wall, the wheels are gonna touch first. Here in a Jeep, you're compromised. You have to have a bumper up there for safety regulations. And because of that bumper, you're never gonna get quite the approach you will in a side-by-side. -side. Now, Jeep has done a lot of things. They put removable caps on the end so you can really clear up around the wheels. The approach angle here is over 40 degrees. It's, it's amazing, but it's not as good because it is compromised. The side-by-side -side is uncompromised. It is built for one thing, going off-road and doing it well. So you get great numbers out of those vehicles. A Jeep, if you wanna build a Jeep, to properly keep up with a side-by-side, -side, especially high speed, you're gonna be spending a pile of money and you gotta do a lot of modifications. So you know what, right out of the box, a side-by-side -side is gonna be a little bit more off-road worthy. I, I really believe that. So a couple other fundamental differences I think should be mentioned. First of all, for passengers, just sort of overall, I think you'll be better served with the Jeep. I think you'll be a little bit more comfortable. You'll probably have a little bit more space. And then the open air thing. So the fact is that a Jeep comes with the roof, but then allows you to remove it. Whereas a side-by-side -side is the other way around. 
very few of them come with roofs, but you can buy one. And you can actually buy full cab systems for side-by-sides now with hard doors, glass windshield, you can get a heater and even air conditioning inside. So you can dress those things up to bring along all those comforts, but a Jeep is just gonna have them right built in. You're gonna get a heater in any Jeep you buy. You're gonna get a roof with any Jeep you buy. It might be a leaky roof, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, so you know what, Yeah, in terms of the actual kind of passenger comfort overall, the, the Jeep is gonna win that battle over a side-by-side. Although side-by-sides have come a really long way and do offer a pretty nice amount of comfort these days and in the power sports world I don't think there is a better passenger experience than in a side-by-side -side. it's no fun on a snowmobile or ATV when you have to sit you know one in front of the other it's no fun to be a passenger like that in a side-by-side -side, you have your own seat your own grab handle you can get four seaters so you can bring the whole family with you um, yeah they've come a long way but overall still Jeep for comfort Finally, I want to talk about one last thing, and that is the intangible part of these vehicles, the fun factor. How much fun are they? And you know what? This is something very personal. What's fun to me might not be what's fun to you and vice versa, but I'm just going to tell you my take on this. So here's the thing with the Jeep. When you're out on the trail in the Jeep, there is something so cool about knowing that this vehicle can be a, a five day a week commuter, can be a family vehicle. And then you get it out there on the trail and it can just do some unbelievable things. The satisfaction that I get from that whole situation anyways is just amazing. And it's one of the things that makes the Wrangler so fun. Um, not to mention just that the numbers are so good in the Wrangler and the clearance is so good that it really makes you feel unstoppable. So compared to anything else you can buy, you get behind the wheel of a Wrangler and you just feel ready to take on anything the world can throw at you. So what about the downsides? Well, I have a couple kind of fun killers here in the Jeep as well. The first one is just overall size. Jeeps in general are big. They just feel bigger. You're never going to get down the tightest trails when, you know, you can buy a 50 inch wide side by side and really fit into some tight stuff. Another fun killer in my books here in the Wrangler, and this especially goes if it is a daily driver for you, if it is a vehicle that you depend on, when you're out on the trail, you're just generally way more careful. I don't even like getting pinstripes on a Wrangler, you know? The branches dragging down the sides of this thing just make me, you know, cringe up, makes my neck crawl, because I, I, I wanna be as nice to my Wrangler as possible. Um, that's not necessarily the case in a side-by-side, -side because it has pure toy status. I've never felt nearly as bad about scraping up a side-by-side -side a bit because who really cares but yeah there's no doubt that some of my fun gets killed in the Wrangler just because I'm so worried about the actual vehicle there's a lot of more uh, mechanical sympathy when I'm in a Wrangler than when I'm in a Razor and then finally the last fun killer in the Wrangler and this is a very personal thing I'll admit it but maybe you're like me I like to go fast. I like to go fast off-road. There's there's just no other way to say it. And uh, the Wrangler isn't built for that, out of the box. Anyway, I, I mentioned this, modifications can do anything, but straight out of the factory, this thing is a crawler. It's meant for crawling down the trail at slow speeds, um, you know, slow as possible, fast as necessary. That is a Wrangler, you know, term to a T. But that's not what I'm looking for out of my off-road vehicles. So now let's flip to the side-by-side -side and the reason that they're so fun and it's for that exact reason you can go high speed these things are generally built for you know really getting out there and ripping really putting your foot into it and the suspensions are designed to soak up stuff at high speed I, I think you know one of the best sort of modern interpretations on that idea is ultra four racing the stuff they do at king of the hammers because the ultra four guys they need to build a car that can do the most incredible rock crawl in the world but then can also get out into the open desert and, and go 90 miles per hour so that's sort of my perfect idea of off-roading is being able to do both in one vehicle and that's what almost every side-by-side -side provides or at least tries to provide is the capability to do the slow speed and the high speed a Jeep you're a little bit more kind of neutered just by the way this vehicle is put together in a side-by-side, -side, there is just something more fun about having 
less around you and, and less going on with your vehicle. Again, it's it's about the focus, right? In a side-by-side, -side, you don't have crazy infotainment systems. I mean, some of them have screens now, but still not to the level that this Jeep has. You don't have buttons all over your steering wheel. You don't have ABS. You don't have a number of these on-road features, which, you know what? Yeah, they don't necessarily get in the way. The buttons don't get in my way while I'm off-roading. But again, this is an intangible. It's the feeling of the side-by-side -side is focused. It is all about going off-road and every single part on that machine is about conquering that trail. The Jeep is compromised, so you don't get that, that really focused fun factor. A side-by-side, -side, when you're ripping it down the trail, it just feels so right. Everything is in perfect harmony, working together, and the fact that the engine is right behind you, it usually has a nice raucous exhaust note, you know, you really hear that thing coming out from just right there. Um, everything about a side-by-side -side is a little bit more visceral, a little bit more intense, and, and that just makes it incredibly fun. So at the end of the day, Jeep or side-by-side, -side, I'm going side-by-side. -side. The focus nature of the side-by-side -side is what makes me go that way. When you are off-roading in one of these machines, you just feel so right. You feel like you belong there. This machine is doing everything it can to make sure that you're having the most fun possible and that you're making it through. So overall, Jeep versus side-by-side, -side, I'm gonna go side-by-side, -side. but you know what, again, you can't go on road, you can't haul your kids in a baby seat in the back seat. So there's so many reasons why Jeeps are incredible too. I'm not knocking the Jeep community, but if you're looking at this focused question of off road, which one of these machines is gonna be more fun and you know really return all the smiles you want for your dollars, side by side it is. There you go guys, now you know all of my thoughts on the subject, but now I need to hear from you. This needs to be a larger conversation because there are so many arguments to be made and they're so personal. So I wanna know what you would spend your hard earned money on, a Jeep or a side by side. So get down in the comments and let us know. Maybe you've already made that choice. If that's the case, then let us know why you went the way you did. And as always, while you're down there, make sure you hit that subscribe button for all of our upcoming videos as we're always going to bring you the latest news, views, and real world reviews. See ya.